Welcome to Planetary Gig Talk, tales of music and magic. I'm your host, Jefferson Glassy, the chief spiritual dude of the Planetary Gig Society, whose mission remains making connections through music with the intention of bringing peace. And today, I am in the worldwide headquarters of the Planetary Gig Society, and we have what I hope will be kind of a special treat. At least it's something different. You know, it's uh, December 2018, and we started doing these podcasts in in the fall of 2017. I've now have done over 60 podcasts, and it's been an incredible experience talking with musicians about the power of music, the power of music in their lives, uh, how they see or what ideas they might have about how we can use music to help make a better world. That music is so unbelievably powerful. I mean, I think we we are music. It is it is us. And it's been such a privilege to be able to talk with all these folks. And I'm not sure at this stage that everybody's going to go back there and listen to all of them from number one. So I thought I would just do a little quick compilation of... The interviews, starting from one in a series, I guess for the holiday season here in 2018. And I really do want to thank all of the people, all of the musicians, others, who took the time to talk with me about these these things. Uh, it's been very important. Many, many profound uh, conversations, moments, etc. And it all started with podcast number one. My guitar teacher, Eric Weinberg, of Little Eric Studios, uh, is a great guy, and he helped me pull together the equipment, the software. I didn't really know anything about doing podcasts. I still am not a tech guy at all, really. But Eric helped me pick up the Focusrite and get the Ableton Live software, and so when it came time to do the first podcast, I said, well, can I interview you? And he said, yes. And so we sat here after a lesson and uh, had a great conversation. And I wanted to play a little snippet. You know, I, I, I talked with Eric about a lot of things. He said, you know, listening is, is mo- the most important thing in music. You know, some people say 80% of music. He said, maybe it's 90% of music. Um, but I also asked him a little bit about, you know, what's different about music? And he, he talked about it uh, in this way. One of the most racist free zones in the world is music. And I suppose sports, sports as yeah. well to some extent. But I think even more so music. Because, you know, there's no rooting against people in general. <laughs> you know, you're, there's no competition going on, you know. Yeah. So I think it's a safe place for people to be who they are. You know, and I think, I think instead of, uh, you know, counties and cities and, and, you know, states and provinces or provinces um, cutting music education, I think we, we need to find more places for it because it's a place where people, it's, music is a place that is understood that none of that stuff matters. None of it. Mm-hmm. You can't wear a hood a, a Ku Klux Klan hood to a jam session. I mean, and, and at least none that I've met. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, you can't be a racist. You can't, you, and you have to just music. It is. I'm not saying that it's going to solve anything. I don't know what it can do. All I know is that stuff has no place there. There's no place for it. There's no seat at the table for, for, for those ideas in music, and and I think that's a great. What a great place to start. Why not start there? I don't know if that's, you know, super hippie idealistic talk or if it's, you know, let's all go touch a mountain now. <laughs> yeah. But but it's, I do believe that it there is something there. And I've never felt any kind of negative feeling, like a racist feeling or, or any kind of weird uh, cultural feeling when I'm playing music, ever. You know, so more music would be good for people. Why not? It's, I mean, it's definitely you know, it's 
it's definitely better than more guns, you know, right? More more music is better than more guns. <laughs> that sounds you can good. Quote me on that. Then I had the opportunity in the second podcast to talk with Steve Little, great guitar player, good friend, fabulous guy. He's also an auctioneer, and he uh, gives a little uh, auctioning yodel, whatever they do <laughs> in the podcast. You should check that out. Um, but one of the things he does is he talks, uh, I'm sorry, he's, he plays at, at, well, retirement homes, old folks' homes. And he, he also developed a program called Dementia, Dementia Melodies, which he did um, for about playing and this, the songs that he played for um, people with dementia. And in the podcast, when I talked with him, he told this story about one of the first times that he went into a dementia ward and uh, played, and there was one woman there who really made an impact on him. It, it was. Everybody seemed kind of shut down, or some people were wandering around, kind of talking, talking to themselves or shuffling along and so on. I started to play, and they wheeled a woman in a wheelchair right up in front of me. And she was, she appeared to be paralyzed, you know, and her eyes were bugged out really big. So if you could get the visual of her about four feet from me staring at me while I'm playing and just kind of looking at her and, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and I was trying to make conversation with people and no, you know, half seemed to sleep and it was, it was, you know, it was, it was really a challenge. And I was, pretty nervous about getting out of there. And this, I was watching this woman, the, the paralyzed woman, and I'll tell you what, she started to, I saw her moving her finger in time with the music, just barely moving her wow. finger. And I, if, if it hadn't been in time with the music, I probably wouldn't have noticed it, you know. But she kept it up, no matter what the tempo was, through the whole concert. She was, I thought she was paralyzed, but she was keeping tempo with her finger and staring at me. So after the concert, I kind of t I put my guitar in the case and I took a deep breath and I went over to her and I said, I saw you keeping time with your finger. I see you in there. And this big tear welled up in the corner of her eye and started to roll down her face. And I was like, oh, man, <laughs> this is something that is, I, I was, you know, you can imagine, I was blown away. And uh, so... It's a particular challenge to play for people with dementia, but I tell you, they are very, they can be so many different ways they're responsive to music. So it's great. That was just such a touching story. Um, so check out that podcast too. Then I had the opportunity to interview a really good friend and a fabulous harmonica player, great musician all in all, uh, Alan Holmes, who I knew from. Uh, Blues Week up at Davis and Elkins College in Elkins, West Virginia. Uh, he was also, uh, te he taught me harmonica for a couple of years and really got me over the hump of learning to bend notes and things. But Alan is also a counselor and a very, very sensitive, smart, wonderful guy. And I asked him, I asked him this question. You were talking at one point about um, in your counseling practice, of uh, seeing that the, the you know mus learning music sort of is similar to people going through life. A absolutely, I think I think, and, and again, the medium doesn't matter whether it's music or painting or dancing. The medium is is not important, but the process of pursuing the mastery of one of one of those art forms. You know, things pop up, struggles, hardships. I don't practice enough. I don't like the way I, I hate my music, you know. I, I never sound good. I mean, all these things that we say to ourselves that we have to sort of get through, I feel like they parallel our personal life issues, our issues with our families and our loved ones and our friends. So, so pursuing a, something creative is like a, it's like a fast track for personal growth. It, 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 it makes these things sort of come to the surface. Which I think is beautiful. It's hard. It's not easy, but it's it's beautiful. You have to kind of learn to keep going. Uh, if you want it, it kind of depends on what you want, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, and, and I agree with what you said earlier. You know, when you were talking about learning that little Walter tune, when when I learn a you know a beautiful song, sort of note for note, nuance for nuance, it it sort of seeps into me in this permanent way that is really indescribable. So it's, it's like you it's like I you have to experience it to really understand it. I remember when I transcribed and learned, uh, you know, with some help, uh, Lester Young's Body and Soul. I mean. Just, just his ideas and, and uh, sort of figuring out what he did, or Sharp Harp by George Harmonica mm-hmm. Smith. Same thing. It's like, and then, and then I found myself, you know, kind of borrowing from that, or, or, or using bits and pieces of it, almost unconsciously in my improvisation. So I think, I think learning, you know, the master pieces like note for note is is just a really great way to to get better and to learn. The next interview coincided with a really great experience that we had. Uh, one of the other founders of Planetary Gig Society, Tara Cor- Gorman, was with Up With People when she was younger, and in October of 2017, Up With People, which is still around, came through Washington, D.C., and we went to the, uh, the concert, went to the events. Planetary Gig Society sponsored up with people that year and we had four of the up with people cast members stay at our house one of them was michael rauderbush who was with up with people as a cast member uh then turned out he was working sort of helping out uh, the cast and putting on the performances and had a great conversation with him and we talked a little bit about the uh really the the power of music as michael said to build bridges. Music is so key to building bridges. I think um, you can go to so many different places that governments can't take you or or even, um, you know, diplomats can't really take you, but music can take you to. Um, you talk to someone in China or in Bangladesh or in South Africa or in Argentina, or in the U.S., and they'll most likely all know a song that they all sang to when they grew up, or um, that everyone knows about. It's just a great way of connecting people around the world. Um, and unless you're really, like, in the very, very small minority, if someone's playing, you'll stop and kind of wonder where that music is coming from. Mm-hmm. Um, depending on what the music sounds like, if it's high intensity energy or if it's quieter um the emotion that transmits through music everyone can feel and i feel like that's a great way to build those bridges of understanding um across cultures it's just when people say music is a universal language i i truly live by that every day um while i'm traveling up with people because we're going to so many different communities um and they all get something from the show that they've been to. Um, And we're trying to transmit that emotion, not just through words, but through music, because that's a great way to reach the heart and not just the mind. Um, So, yeah. Next up was a great friend, fabulous singer, musician, artist, visual artist, amazing person, Allison Chase Radcliffe. And she talked a little bit about um, artists and the need for them really to be paid more, to be compensated better, that it was sort of an unappreciated uh, thing that artists and musicians do. And then she said this about really why she does what she does. Um, I guess all, all the forms of art that I do um, have this the process of creating uh, my work, whether it's music or visual art, is um, the most whole experience that I can have. Hmm. Um, it it makes me feel like I am supposed to be alive. It, it, it's, it's my reason for existing. And that's some pretty powerful stuff. Well said, Allison. 
Then I had the great pleasure to interview a really, really good friend of mine uh, from Seattle, harmonica player, fabulous harmonica player, Grant Dermody. Uh, We were very close to Grant. Uh, His wife, Eileen, who passed away, was one of my wife's best friends, my wife Julie's best friends. Uh, We spent a lot of time together. And Grant is a very spiritual guy. He is a Buddhist and also a shaman. And during the interview, we talked a lot about uh, the similarities with Buddhism and shamanism and music. And he sort of said, you know, it's all the same thing. And then he said a couple of things here that I thought were really profound and wanted to play for you. There are forces that are very actively trying to separate us and keep us apart and tell us that we are not one, that we are not together, that we are divided, that we are separate, that we are red, blue, whatever it might be. And that's just not true. That's just, that is a falsehood that's perpetuated so that an advantage can be gained by people who want that advantage. And uh, music can cut through all of that and bring us right back to where we are the same. We are the one. We are part of this deal and we're all in it together. So you can see that some of the topics we talk about in Planetary Gig Talk are pretty deep, and but I think in many ways evident, um, self-evident. We all we are one. It seems like we're separate from one lens, but we kind of know that we're we're all in this together, as Grant said. Next up was a another good friend, fabulous finger picking guitar player Frank Fatusky, formerly from New Jersey, now from Maine. He he played a house concert with Grant Dermody at our home uh, just before he recorded those podcast interviews. Uh, Frank is a big proponent of. Uh, he says, you know, the two things that get people together: food and music. You know, break bread and play some music. And then he talked a little bit about his perspective playing at a house concert and and really kind of getting making that connection with the the audience with the people just the interaction uh you know when people come to see you especially at a house concert that's what they're there for you know and then when you connect with them it just uh you know playing music is great (laughs) but when you connect with someone it just takes it to another uh, level of of enjoyment and then the fellowship that's involved with it and then uh, I prefer so in a performance situation I don't like I don't like a stage and I like to be as close to the the uh, audience as possible because that just brings the energy closer when there's when when there starts to be distance I can feel it, and I don't like that. So the closer you get, the more they are then a part of the performance, and you can talk, and if you, know, you get a, a laugh, a cry, or, or whatever, that is just uh, as much as playing the instrument, you're playing the room. I also had the opportunity to interview Barry Warsaw, it's a great bass player. But what Barry and I, when we first met each other, some local gig or establishment or something, somehow we started talking about Victor Wooten's book, The Music Lesson. And that, that got us on a path of conversation that uh, led to uh, talking about music and, and Tai Chi and music and quantum physics. And if you want to listen to the whole interview, you should do that. But um, I'll play a little bit of a clip here. Um, Barry's a bass player, and he talked about uh, some of the similarities of uh, music and Tai Chi. So um, Tai Chi is essentially a Chinese martial art, um, and it's related to Kung Fu, um, but it's really refined, and um, it's... The nice thing about it is it's physically very approachable. So you can have kids. I went I went through and relearned relearned the form from the beginning with my nine year old son, or when he was nine, and that was that was great. 
Uh, but, you know, there, we have people, I, I attended a seminar recently, and there was a 90-year-old guy there who had been doing it for a few years, and he was still, you know, moving his body. So unlike other martial arts, it's, it's not that physically demanding, but what it does is it, is it exercises your mind. So you have, so you're really using your mind to understand, to listen to your body. Mm. It's it's a hard concept to sort of describe, but I really feel like the listening and the sensitivity that you learn in Tai Chi, it's all it's kind of like a form of moving meditation. Mm. Um, it's the same muscles we talk about: listening, listening to your body, listening to your partner when you're doing partner work, and it's exactly the same muscles that you use when you're listening to music or listening to your bandmates. Wow. It's exactly the same thing. Um, so I see a lot of deep connections between the two practices, for sure. This is all really cool stuff, as far as I'm concerned. And, you know, just imagine, here I am talking with a few people and we're talking about music and shamanism and Tai Chi and, and, and all this, and it's really pretty crazy. A couple more I'd like to play for you in, in this session. Uh, I talked with Mary Flower, fabulous guitar picker out in uh, Oregon the, these days. And uh, she had done a house concert at our house, and I, I talked with her a little bit about the future of music. You know, she's not big on uh, a lot of the things you hear on the radio, you know, where the people are, uh, their voices are auto-tuned and that kind of thing, but she made a good point here. The grassroots movement, it's its the future of music as far as I see it, the and there are house concerts movement. everywhere. Yeah. It's a its a really wonderful thing, and I know more and more people who are quote-unquote famous, but maybe past their prime, uh, not past their prime, but they're not in the famous world so much anymore, are doing house concerts because they realize it's just, it's a great place to be. And, you know, that really is what Planetary Gig Society is all about, is just trying to promote many, many other people who are out there doing fabulous things, great things, playing amazing music. But, but just more thought about how we can have more gigs around the planet, how we can have more music in our homes, more music at our, at our neighborhood parties, etc. So um, I really want to thank Mary for, for those comments. Then I had the opportunity to talk with a, a great guy in the association community, uh, membership association community where I work, Eric Schoner. And uh, he was actually in a past life, a, a music therapist. And he talked a little bit about, uh, during, the, during our talk, about how music can touch people who are, have been in difficult situations, you know, um, with aut autism or other things. But here are a couple things he had to say about music generally. You know, what other thing out there is it that you can experience by, by simply listening to it? You don't even have to. You actively engage in music. The tone starts tapping. <clears throat> right. And it brings you back to a place. It brings, it reminds you of a smell. I mean, it, uh, it, it reminds you of that time in your life that you got your first kiss or or you went out with your favorite girl or or you you, you were out in the yard throwing a stick for your dog yeah, yeah it, it's, it brings it's... home all of that finally had the opportunity to talk with great friend wonderful person the co-founder of the planetary gig society the god of goddess of awesomeness Tara Gorman and her podcast today remains the most highly rated uh, podcast that we uh, have had because Tara was with Up With People, and I think a lot of Up With People people listen to her podcast, and uh, that's quite a fabulous uh, organization. Uh, you heard from Michael Radebush earlier. Um, but Tara had, a, had some really good advice, I think, for people um, about music. It's, it's such a connector. And, you know, everybody can really participate. Here's Tara. You know, not everybody's a musician, but music brings people together no matter if you're a musician or you just enjoy it. And I think, I think that's really the important, a lot, 
important things because a lot of people who feel like, well, I have to be a musician to participate or I used to play the guitar. There are a lot of people that I talk to who say, I used to play the guitar. Yeah, I played in college and, and it's been, you know, it's, it's been in the closet and now I'm in, you know, I went to medical school and I have children and I, I don't play anymore and that's for other people and it's not for me and that's not serious and I've got to, you know, be a, be a parent and, and be a professional and, and you know what? You also need to tap into the joy of, of who you were because that person's still there. Very wise words from Tara Gorman. You know, music is a lot of fun. It's a lot more fun than doing bills or worrying about insurance. It brings people together. Uh, it's it's so powerful. So I hope you've enjoyed this uh, quick compilation of the first 11 uh, podcasts in the Planetary Gig Talk series. Uh, not sure when I'm going to do the next uh, compilation, but hopefully you've enjoyed this one. Uh, you can always go back and listen to any of the podcasts. They're on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, etc. And on the website, planetarygigs.org. And just thanks very much for listening. Really appreciate it. If you have any, any questions, comments, anything you want to talk about, suggestions, always happy to hear them. Jefferson at planetarygigs.org. And I, I plan to keep on doing these uh, podcasts, these, having these conversations, because there's a lot of folks to talk with. I could talk with everybody on the planet about the power of music in their lives and have a good conversation. But there are a lot of folks that I do want to specifically talk with, and uh, hopefully, you know, they'll be coming up soon. So keep on listening, subscribe to the podcast, if you will, rate us, uh, uh, review, tell your friends, um, and, uh, just want to say thank you very much everybody totally totally appreciate it it's a wonderful uh, experience and hopefully we're we're doing some good out there thank you you've been listening to planetary gig talk tales of music and magic i'm your host jefferson glassy chief spiritual dude of the planetary gig society we talk with musicians and others about the power of music, and how we can use music to help create a better world. Please check out our website, www.planetarygigs.org, for information about some of the organizations promoting music and musicians, resources about the power of music, books, movies, articles, including new research on music and the brain. We welcome your support. Planetary Gig Society is a Section 501c3 charitable organization, and you can donate on the website. You also can receive a free email signature block demonstrating your support for Planetary Gig Society. Please follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Planetary Gigs. And we want to thank fabulous musician and teacher Eric Weinberg of Little Eric Studios for the Planetary Gig Talk music titled Chill Kid, It's Saul. So please check out Planetary Gig Talk on iTunes, Google Play, and Stitcher. Subscribe and hear all the upcoming episodes. Thanks very much.